السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, To start with the general embryology lectures I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the first week of development and the events that take place at this time I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt The objectives of my presentation uh, will be First I'm gonna discuss the capacitation then the fertilization and finally the plastocyst formation uh, let me first uh, remind you of the shape of the mature sperm and ova this is the shape of the mature sperm this is the head region containing the nucleus the nucleus contains of course the genetic material the head is covered by a cap called a chromosomal cap containing the enzymes necessary for penetration of the layers uh, covering the ova. This is the mid piece and the mid piece contains the mitochondria and the mitochondria is responsible for production of the energy necessary for the sperm to move and travel through the uh, female genital tract. This is the tail. The tail is um, the part of the sperm responsible for the motility or movement of the sperm. This is the shape of uh, a released ova from the ovary in the mid cycle. It contains the cytoplasm, inside it lies the nucleus. Then there are layers or coats surrounding this uh, ova to protect it. This inner layer is called the zona pellucida. And then we have layer of cells surrounding the ova. It's called the corona radiata. At one point, they just accumulate to form what's called cumulus or offers. The sperms cannot fertilize the oocytes when they are newly ejaculated from the male. So they need to go um, into this process which is called capacitation, which means that the sperm becomes ready or capable for fertilization. This process of uh, capacitation takes about 5 to 7 hours. It takes place inside the female genital tract, mainly inside the cervix. The acrosomal reaction cannot occur until capacitation is completed. So if we look at this picture, this is a newly ejaculated sperm. The head region is covered with uh, glycoproteins and other proteins from the seminal fluid. After capacitation, there will be removal of the adherent proteins from the seminal fluid, thus exposing some receptors that will bind with the zona pellucida. Also, there will be alteration of the plasma membrane over the head region. By the end of this, um, the acrosomal reaction or the release of the enzymes from the acrosome will be easy. Also, capacitation helps the sperm to be more active and more motile. And now they are ready to travel through the female genital tract in order to reach the ova and fertilize it. So how they travel through the female genital tract? First, uh, semen is ejaculated from the male and deposited into the female vagina. The number of sperms in this ejaculate about 200 to 600 million sperms. Just only one sperm is needed for fertilization and the rest will die inside the female genital tract. So if we summarize this and look at this diagram, this is the female genital tract, this is the vagina, this is the cervix, this is the uterus, this is the body and this is the fundus, this is the uterine cavity and this is the cervical canal and these are the two fallopian tubes. We start here with the narrow part, it's called the intramural part and this is the isthmus and this is the uh, ampulla or the widest part of the fallopian tube and it ends with finger-like processes called infundibular part of the fallopian tube and this is of course uh, the ovary it is connected to the uterus by a ligament it's called the ovarian ligament so let's imagine that these dots are the 200 million sperms that are deposited inside the female genital tract and inside the vagina, most of the sperms will die because of the high vaginal acidity. Then the remaining sperms will travel 
or swim inside uh, the mucus of the cervix to and go upward uh, inside the female genital tract but the mucus inside the cervix makes another barrier so death of some sperms will take place so let's imagine this is the time uh, of ovulation in the mid cycle and the uh, ova is now released from the ovary and picked up by the fembrae of uh, the fallopian tube and get into the uh, ampulla of the uterine tube so some sperms will ascend inside the uterine cavity and reach uh, the fallopian tube like this they will go upward to the side and try to reach the over others will lose their way like this group will just travel into the uterine cavity and stop there or even go into the wrong direction. Next we have what is called acrosomal reaction. The sperm secretes enzymes from its acrosome. These enzymes help to penetrate the egg coats. For example, we have um, hyaluronidase enzyme that disperse the corona radiata cells. We have trypsin-like enzyme which digested the zona pellucida and another enzyme called zona lysine it softens the zona pellucida. So in this animation you can see the acrosome it releases its enzymes, the different enzymes that will um, digest the layers that surround the ova. So if we look at this uh, diagram we have here the uh, ova okay but uh, in this stage, the ova is arrested in second meiotic division. It did not complete its second meiotic division yet. However, what concerns us here is to see the layers that surround or the coats that surround the ova. We have uh, the cell which contains the nucleus. Here we have the cell membrane of the ova. And then uh, this is the zona pellucida. And then we have this layer of corona radiata cells and um, and this aggregation of cells at the outside is called cumulus of rest cells here we can see the sperm this is the head region covered by the acrosome which contains the enzymes and this is the tail of the sperm in this diagram you can see that the acrosome reaction is already done and the enzymes from the acrosome is released from the head of the sperm and um, these enzymes will disperse the corona radiata cells and the cumulus or ophorous cells. Then, uh, after a penetration of uh, the first two layers, then the sperm will bind with the zona uh, pellucida and try to penetrate it. After that, um, the sperm will bind with the cell membrane uh, of the egg itself or the ova itself, like this. And then only the nucleus will get inside and fuse with the um, nucleus of the female uh, ova. Immediately after penetration of the sperm um, to the ova or to the egg, there will be activation of the ova or the egg. It is called the egg activation. Let me uh, remind you again, before fertilization, the secondary oocyte was arrested in what is called the second meiotic division. Upon binding with the sperm, uh, the secondary oocyte will complete its second meiotic division leading to formation of the egg or the ova and another cell called second polar body. Each contains only 23 chromosomes meaning that half the number of the chromosomes of the human being and also half the amount of the DNA. After egg activation, there will be an, another reaction uh, made by the ova. It is called the cortical reaction. Um, in this reaction, uh, the egg will liberate uh, granules called the cortical granules uh, from the oocyte. These cortical granules contain a mixture of enzymes. These enzymes will change the structure of the zona pellucida inducing what is known as zona reaction. So, what is the significance of the zona reaction it blocks the polyspermy or penetration of the ova by another sperms uh, the zona pellucida become hard 
the sperm receptors over the zona pellucida will be destroyed like this so if you see uh, this is the cortical granules the red dots here after penetration of the sperm the cortical granules will be released and these cortical granules will change the character of the zona pellucida so if we look at this other sperm that try to penetrate the ova it will be stopped and it will not go any further so immediately after fertilization the nuclear envelope of both the sperm and the ova will disappear now uh, we have a zygote that is formed of 46 chromosomes and the mitotic division or the division of uh, this zygote will start immediately so if we summarize the results of fertilization uh, first there will be completion of the second meiotic division of the egg there will be restoration of the diploid number of chromosomes after the fusion of the two pronuclei sex will be determined after fertilization the zygote is formed and there will be start of cell division what about the abnormal fertilization in this case you can see a zygote with three pronuclei uh, this occurs when there is double penetration or double fertilization of, of an ova by two sperms this results in a zygote containing triple uh, the amount of the genetic material the extra set of chromosome re will result in formation of different anomalies like a syndactyly for example you can see that uh, there is fusion of uh, the fingers of uh, this uh, baby and of course other anomalies that will result from the triploidy uh, will be incompatible with life next i'm going to talk about the plastocyst formation it starts with cleavage of the zygote and then a formation of this stage which is called the morula and finally the plastocyst uh, when the plastocyst hatches outside its covering of the zona pellucida it will become ready for implantation and this will be discussed in the coming video so if we look at this simple diagram you can see here at the time of ovulation the release of the egg or the oocyte and then uh, there will be a uh, fertilization of this egg formation of zygote and then the cleavage or uh, the division or mitotic division will start in day one after fertilization in day two we end up with two cell stage and then four cell stage and then eight cell stage and so on till uh, formation of the morula stage at uh, 16 cell stage uh, when the um, morula enters inside the uterus it starts to absorb water from the uterine cavity and uh, leading to formation of a cavity inside it so it will transform into what is called blastula or plastocyst and then the, this plastocyst will hatch outside the zona pellucida and become ready for implantation so uh, during cleavage there is no cytoplasm synthesis so the divided cells get smaller and smaller and they, and they will multiply from two cells to four to eight to 16 and so on each of these cells is called a plastomere and remember that the zona pellucida is still intact so a division occurs within it uh, this stage is called the morula it's formed around day three of development it's formed of a solid ball of cells up to uh, 32 cells and they also lie within the zona pellucida it's called morula because it looks like a puri uh, this morula will be swept to uh, the uterus by the cilia of the tube then small cavities will appear between the cells leading to the next stage of development which is called the plastocyst uh, the blastocyst or the blastula is formed at day four of development it reaches the uterine cavity it has um, two identifiable cell types an outer one it's called trophoblast and an inner uh, cell mass it is called embryoplast 
It also contains a fluid filled cavity. It is called plasto seal. The outer layer or outer cell layer is called trophoblast. It is the peripheral flattened cells that surround uh, the plastocyst. And it will form the placenta and the uh, membranes that will surround the embryo. And from its name, trophy means nutrition. So it will be the source for formation of the structure that will feed the embryo, which is the placenta. Uh, the inner layer, it's called the inner cell mass or embryoplast. It's formed of rounded cells located at one uh, pool of the plastocyst. And from its name, it will form the embryonic tissue or the entire embryo. What's meant by blastocyst hatching? The zona pellucida uh, will degenerate and exactly from the sperm entry side, which is the weakest point now, and the entire zona pellucida will break down by the uterine and plastula secretions. Uh, so you can see that uh, this is the zona pellucida layer here and this weak point um, with the increased pressure inside the plastula it will break this point and the plastula hatches through this weak point and try to get out of it and free itself till it is completely released from the zona pellucida. Now the plastula is ready for implantation by the end of the first week of uh, development. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you like it, please do not forget to subscribe, like and share.